John MacArthur gives great advice on discipleship in a big picture way. So how can we as men take practical steps to living that out? What does it look like to actually do discipleship? John MacArthur has a great interview where the question revolves around discipleship and what that looks like. And in typical fashion, John MacArthur gives a fantastically definitive answer and tells a wonderful story about a man who he discipled a half a country away. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. Pastor MacArthur focuses on a couple points to help us understand what discipleship is. First, he brings it back to the Great Commission. Then he talks about discipleship as teaching and discipleship as passing it on. So first, he brings it back to the Great Commission, which is our command from Jesus to disciple the nations. In doing so, he helps us by simplifying discipleship from like a big program that your church does, or a course you take, or even a mentoring relationship that you have. And he really simplifies it into believers teaching one another. He reminds us that discipleship is simply teaching the truths of the Bible faithfully, and that there's a flow to it. That if you're being discipled, then pretty soon after you start, you'll both be a disciple and also have disciples of your own. One thing I love that he mentions is the point of it is scriptural. In 1 Timothy 1.5, we see that the aim of our charge is love that issues from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. Pastor John also gives the journey we go on as we are discipled in truth. We understand, then we believe, then we apply it. And the result is more love for others and the world. It's really a blessing how Pastor John conveys this message, and you can see that he's baked it into his church and its ministries. So, how do we do it? We do it by getting into the flow of passing on the truth. We find people that are willing to teach us at our churches. Then, they can help us identify who we can pass that on to. So here's some practical ways I've found throughout my life to do just that. When I was a young pup, I had people disciple and mentor me, and that was, just insanely powerful. In fact, I credit that as God's providence, like giving me a solid foundation that eventually brought me back to him later in life when I went through a pretty awful wilderness period. I had a church that implemented this well, so this is an encouragement for those men watching this that have many ways to get connected at their church. Make sure you're taking advantage of them. I think there's an idea that if you're discipling too often at a church that people will get burnt out leading or participating. I think that's about the dumbest thing I've heard. If you're discipling correctly, then you should have many men at your church equipped properly to help with this. Churches should have a lot of ways to get men and families connected. And that means they should be identifying and encouraging men to not just participate, but to take responsibility for making it happen. And I think we're at a point where we're in much, uh, pretty big danger of men not having enough opportunities to connect with the church and each other. And the church really needs to lead the way on showing the world what true community and true fellowship looks like. Another way to start discipling is simply to start with what God has already put in front of your face. We often look right over what God has put directly in front of us. Uh, but I, look, I went through a season where I got super fired up for Jesus and you wanna change the world when you're on fire, don't you? But we forget that we do that by first changing ourselves and discipling our families. If your family's not in a rock solid place, that is your first mission field. I think that many believers struggle along trying to add more to their plate when what they need to do is take a step back and learn how to be the man their family needs. And this isn't something you have to wait to do either. I've seen men start in discipleship and put in some effort and it was part of what transformed their families and relationships for the better. And guess what? That struggle is something your pastor can help you with. Don't struggle alone agonizing over what to do next. Reach out to someone at your church, an elder or a pastor. That's what they're there for. And when your family is in a good spot, the next step can be more formal. Joining a discipleship program, a structured program at your church, or starting one if it doesn't exist. This can be as simple as starting something uh, at church that more men can become involved in. Giving them another chance to connect and talk about God's word and learn together. I think it's important to have regular men's events and family events. It's currently the world's set up to isolate and treat everyone as an individual constantly. And how many families do you know who are all at home right now, probably in different rooms on different devices? Men, we have to lead by example. So another thing you could do is find a curriculum and start a weekly group that meets specifically for discipleship. I've done this at my church, uh, been a part of one, and I've witnessed this have a huge impact on several of the men in the group I was in, including myself. 
then you can start a less formal discipleship group, like a community Bible study. This doesn't have to be anything crazy. It can be as simple as asking some of the other dads or dudes in your neighborhood if they'd like to hang out and talk about the Bible. So practically, those are some of the ways you could start being a disciple. Step one, get filled up by a good local church. Step two, strengthen, evangelize, and disciple your family. Step three, get involved in discipleship formally at your church. And step four, identify a way you can start enabling discipleship in your community. We have to overcome the consumer mentality and strive to be the change we want to see. So pray for God to give you wisdom over where he's calling you to be discipled and to disciple others. And make sure to grab the free Bible reading tracker in the description below if you haven't already. Uh, Keep reading God's word and I'll catch you soon.